Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, the best time of the day to train, specifically with weights, specifically for hypertrophy, but strength is included and so is sport practice. So basically any hard training, which you want results, what time of the day is best to train, especially for muscle gains and for strength gains. Let's take a look. So because you guys signed up for all the science here, we're gonna give you a principled approach. There are some universal considerations that can tailor your choice as to what time of the day to train. It's not a one-factor problem, it's a multifactorial problem. Here's the deal. Always a consideration is when you in the day normally feel psychologically like you have the most energy, okay? It's like if you wake up at five in the morning because someone told you that's the magical time to train and you're like, uh, and you get to the gym and you're like, uh, and you have a pre-workout and you're like, uh, what am I doing? Maybe that's not the best time for you. And maybe ideally you don't want to train at 7 p.m. for some reasons we'll get to in a bit. But if you just feel God's fire and wind in your fists when you're at 7 p.m. and you're just like, oh, I want to kill shit. Maybe you could train a little later than normal and maybe 7 p.m. really is your time. Other factors do play a role, but that energy uh, that you have, sort of just your psychological feeling of when you can produce the most high quality work, that's important to consider. Next consideration is when you're able to get at least one big meal after. You even, let's say you feel God's wind and energy at 11 p.m. every night, and then at 1 a.m. you get home and you're so tired, you just go straight to sleep, no meal. That doesn't bode well for strength adaptations. It doesn't bode well for hypertrophy adaptations. You want to put the recovery process into motion. You don't want to starve yourself for 10 hours right after training. That's no bueno. Don't do it. So at least when you're designing a protocol, let's say even if some of the factors take you to really late night training or training that's like right before a big work meeting that lasts six hours and you won't be able to eat, uh, should have at least one solid food meal right after, okay? Uh, it doesn't have, sorry, not solid food meal, a solid meal of food. Uh, you, it can be a liquid meal for sure. It just has to be a meaningful amount of food to really get the recovery and adaptation processes going. Here's another consideration, very related, at a time which doesn't interfere with sleep. So if you had unreal training energy at 11 p.m. and then at one, you go to sleep and you're like wide awake at three, like <laughs> still like recovering from your workout and still amped, bad, bad news because you're interfering with sleep. On the other end, I, you guys will relate to this uh, probably no matter where you're from in the world. There's like a cultural expectation that when you start fitness, you like wake up early to do shit. I don't know how it is everywhere else, but like in America, there's this like lore where it's like, I'm going to make some fucking changes, man. And I go, yeah, is that right? Like, yeah, man, January 1st, I'm going to start waking up at 4 a.m. to run. I'm like, fucking, why? What is it that happens at 4 a.m. that is so conducive to running? I'll answer this, nothing. Okay, but here's the thing. If you think you need to train really early, and it interferes with your highest quality sleep. Like real talk, my best sleep occurs between the hours of 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. You could detonate a fucking nuke next to my apartment building and I won't wake up between four and seven. Well, actually, I won't wake up at all because I'll be dead from the nuke. But in any case, high quality sleep then, I do not mess with that. If someone's like, hey, you want to train at 6 a.m.? I'm like, no, God, no, the hell would I do that? Because sleep is super anabolic. Sleep is super recovery promoting. Sleep is super prone to increasing fat loss rates. You don't mess with sleep. So whatever kind of training design you want, whatever time of the day you want to train, make sure it doesn't interfere with the sleep or interferes with it as little as possible. Lastly, big universal is when you don't feel sick. Okay, is it true that if you have multiple meals before you go train, you'll have uh, your glycogen stores will be maxed out, your blood glucose will be maxed out, you're gonna be recovered from whatever you did the day before, you're gonna be really ready to go. Yeah, to, to a certain extent, that's absolutely true. Versus let's say training with no food. You just wake up and go to the gym. Yeah, like one or two meals in is probably a little bit more ideal on average. But here's the thing, if you get vomity during your workouts or sick, if you've eaten recently, maybe that's not an option or maybe you need to wait longer or something like that. So if someone tells you, look, you got three solid food meals in, you got to eat at 8 a.m., 12, 4, and then at 5, I want you to go train. You go at 5 and you're like, mm. after one set of squats, it's not tenable. And someone could say like, for example, me, when I do most of my training, definitely my leg training, I almost always train legs on an empty stomach. 
And it doesn't mean I wake up and wait a whole while. Like I usually wake up and within one hour, probably less, I'm already training. So I don't spend a lot of time catabolic or anything like that. But I don't even have a protein shake nowadays before I train legs because it is just coming out if I have it. And you could say, well, like technically, Dr. Mike, wouldn't it be better if you had some energy in your bloodstream, some glucose from a meal? I agree with you. But because it would make me sick, it would disrupt the quality of my workout. Also, who the hell likes throwing up? Yeah, I post bullshit on Instagram to get the clicks and share like, look how tough I am. But really, nobody likes vomiting, you know, it's gross. So you don't want that stuff. You, and if it has to sacrifice time of the day for training, then then maybe that has to come. So people say, well, why do you train first thing in the morning for legs? Be like, so if I train any other time, I'm just going to throw up whatever food I have. Yeah, that's how it works. So all of these things should be taken into consideration, right? For the average person, if we take a, for the average person, very important, if we take all these into consideration, what good recommendation can we start you off with? Because I don't want to give you guys a video that's like, hey, like, here's all the considerations. Good luck. Right? We're going to give you a little bit more than that. For the average person, the mid-morning is a really good time to train. Now, most people have day jobs. They can't train then, but high-level athletes, a huge fraction of them train mid-morning for a reason, at least the first session. You're one to two meals in, so your training energy is really high, but you aren't too full yet. Okay, if you train like after four or three or four meals and you're on a mass gaining plan, holy crap, you know, it's just come right back out. You want to train something like one to three hours after your last meal so that you don't vomit, but so that you still have plenty of energy from it. Like if you train five hours after your last meal, you're like basically just super hungry during training. But if you train one hour after your last meal or 30 minutes or something, then it just comes, all the food just comes right back up if it's hard training. So, in addition to that, mid-morning is good because you have two to four meals left in the day to really recover and grow the crap out of you. So mid-morning is like my cluster just first fire off, like, Mike, when should I train? I'm like, mid-morning. And if you go, but, I'm like, up, 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 last slide, go to the universals and do all the butts. You start there intellectually, okay, mid-morning, that's where you start. And then we're gonna bias it forward or backward depending on the following inputs. First input is schedule. Like if you can't, if you work, that's out. It's okay, I can't do mid-morning. I work from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Good, good news, you, now you train at 4.30. Okay, we take the mid-morning and we move it up. Or you train at like, I don't know, 4 a.m. That's kind of crazy. If that interferes with your sleep, it's off, right? We'll get to that in a sec. So if you, uh, you know, wherever you start, if you can't, or your training partner, let's say, can't make it at 11 a.m., but he can make it at 1 p.m., then yeah, you just move it to 1. Because it's not ideal, uh, maybe for you. Uh, it's not that template that just stays at mid-morning, but it moves according to your schedule demands. Next one is training intensity ability. So mid-morning on average is good, but if you really just fired up early morning, train earlier. If you're fired up later, bias your training time later to the extent that it allows you to train harder. You say, look, okay, ideally I'm on fire at 5 p.m., but I know it's not great because there's not a ton of meals after that. I don't want to do 11 a.m., <sighs> Hey, training partner, let's try 2 or 3 p.m. And he's going to be like, okay, that sounds great. And it turns out you have plenty of energy, not your best, but also the, you know, the food stuff is good and you get plenty of recovery afterwards. So it checks most of the boxes, right? Next one is meal timing. Sometimes you have preset meals. You can only eat them a certain time. Like if you have breakfast always at 7 a.m., you may not be able to train at 7.30. So you have to consider that. Move it along with meal timing. Sleep, quality, and amount. Like if someone, if you really do have your best workouts early in the morning, but you're also one of these people that are like, look, if I sleep in a little bit, it absolutely does wonders for my recovery. I can wake up. I get my pre-workout and have a baller session. But like, I know I should be sleeping in a little bit more. I just want to grab the day by the horns, you know? then maybe, yeah, don't start at 11 p.m., but don't start at 4 a.m. Maybe start at like 8 a.m. or something like that. Break the difference between the two. Digestive comfort, and this one I beat to death already, but look, if you can't, if you're being throwing up your food or if you train so late that you try to eat a bunch of food right after and your digestive discomfort while you're trying to fall asleep, you're like, uh, I'm going to throw up in my bed. You guys ever have your belly so full of food that you can only lay on the side? And if you lay on your stomach, you're like, nope, that's coming right back out. <laughs> like, you don't want that situation. So if you say, okay, I would love to train at 11 p.m., but I'm going to train at 9 p.m. because then I can eat a meal right after and I can be okay when I go back to sleep. Um, 
Another consideration potentially, and these are a little bit more exotic, but I had to throw them in there, is training at a time you're going to be competing. So like if you typically train at 6 p.m., but your powerlifting meet's gonna be at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., you might want a couple of sessions in the last couple of weeks at 9 or 10 a.m. ideally, so you're used to exhibiting uh, your best abilities at that time. It's psychologically and physiologically, changes will happen to make you better at your sport if you practice at that time in which you're gonna be competing. I know it's really crazy, but a lot of you have been competitive athletes before are currently, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like if you compete at a very different time than you train, like if you always lift at night, but then like it's like nine in the morning and you're at the athletes meeting and policy meet, they're like, all right, I'm going to bars loaded in 30 minutes. Go ahead and warm up. And you're like, warm up. This is usually when I sit at a desk and type on a computer for the next eight hours <laughs> and you, you start warming up and look like your muscles feel different in the morning than at night. And you're like, my knees, what the hell's going on? So if you've never tried it before, it can be pretty rough and it is an important competition. It's maybe a good idea to, to get a little bit of experience like that. And if you are training and competing in the same weekend, so like, for example, weightlifters will do this, some runners will do it, where they'll have training runs, like days or a day separated from competition runs, easier runs, of course, easier weightlifting sessions, but nonetheless, some separation, then you want to alter it from that. So for example, you have a weightlifting meet on Saturday, you're probably going to be doing some training on Friday. In most cases, weightlifters do some kind of at least warm up, and sometimes they go relatively heavy even, and there's a bit of a potentiation effect, even on Friday. But like, look, it should be earlier on Friday. Let's say you normally lift in the evening, fine, but you don't want to lift Friday evening and still be sore and tired for Saturday morning because no one's going to wait for you in the competition. It's not going to be Saturday night. It's going to be Saturday morning. So yeah, you have to train Friday. Normally you train in the evening, train in the morning. It's going to suck a little bit, but then you're going to have hours and hours and hours of glycogen repletion, muscle recovery, get a great a night of sleep, wake up Saturday and you're going to be like, all right, I'm super ready to go. So that's another consideration here. Now, TLDR, I should have just like timestamped this earlier if you just want to fast forward to this, not wade through all the bullshit of this video. Um, here is the sort of breakdown in simple terms. The good news is that if you have to train at a certain new time per day, like let's say you're, you get a new job, your training partner does, or both, move to a new city, and you're like, I have to train at 11 a.m. now? Fuck, I'm a 4 p.m. guy, this sucks. You will get used to it. Your body's incredibly flexible. And they've done multiple studies where they should train here, train there. After a few weeks, most people are like, this is great. And sometimes you don't get completely used to it, but it's gonna be much better. Don't judge a training time by that first day you ever tried it, that shock of like, what the hell am I doing here? Give it a couple more days. And by the end of the week, you're probably gonna be like, yeah, 11 a.m. is fine. I don't even remember what it was like to train at four, right? And in the end, and here's the real big one, don't sweat the training times too much. I know a lot of you folks uh, looking up this video are gonna have read other stuff or watch other stuff. They do deep dives into the literature, diurnal variations, hormonal peaks, what's the real best time of the day to train. None of that stuff matters that much. You wanna pick a time that lets you train hard. You wanna pick a time that lets you get a few meals in after to recover and have plenty of energy before. You wanna pick a time that doesn't mess with your sleep and that fits your schedule, and that's about it. Give it some thought, like, comment, subscribe, pick five people from your email list, maybe grandma, maybe your boss, forward them this video and say this one video will change your life. And then they're gonna be super disappointed and they're gonna hate you. Folks, see you next time.